Joe and podcast to be released in a later episode. Uh, this is Alex Caravan, traveling baseball data uh, manager of data science. Right now, sipping on a, a spin drift because it was two bucks off at CVS, dude. And I'm not trying to get smashed before my uh, department meeting. Smart. 6 30. Lindley. Just slinging deals. Kyle Lindley, sports engineer. Still ripping a fantastic haze from Sierra Nevada. Uh, You're nursing that, dude? Norca. Yeah. You've been dude, nursing that? Yeah, I'm not finishing this today, dude. It's Monday night. Wow. Hey, and I'm Anthony Brady. Uh, <laughs> just drinking some water. I'm just I'm just going water. Um, for everyone that it, that is watching this, we just finished actually uh, recording the the podcast with with Dean Jackson, and um, I think as some of you know, Lindley and I just got back from doing some motion capture collections in Arizona and Texas at the two pop up shops we have down there, and uh, Actually, one of the athletes that we did in Phoenix uh, capitalized on the caravan 10% off uh, assessment incentive. Uh, so this is this is David. I'll let you uh, introduce yourself, but we're going to go over um, David's biomechanics report as part of like just a, a separate segment. Um, maybe it'll be an episode. We'll we'll see. But kind of like a uh, all of us and David getting together, going over his uh, his biomechanics report and athlete meeting. So. David, um, who are you, and how did you find out about the Arizona mocap assessment? Um, I'm David Lejevic. I go to Servite High School. Um, I found out about the assessment through the podcast. Uh, I heard you guys talking about the remote training, and I like follow <laughs> driveline on Twitter. So I saw that you guys were going to be in Texas, and then Kyle announced that you guys were going to be in Arizona too. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to get the mocap done, and then Caravans, ten percent off made it an even better deal. So let's go, let's go. That's huge. Yeah. So you said you're you're in high school, uh, right? Are you a yeah. junior or senior? I'm a junior. Junior right now, so going into yeah. junior spring, and yeah, you guys are practicing right now, correct? Yeah, I just I had practice today, so okay. Yeah, we've been practicing all year, pretty much. Nice, nice. And then, as far as uh, as far as like driveline goes, have you done any like, uh, like what's your driveline level of familiarity? Like you've done the stuff on the side. Have you ever trained with us in for like online training or anything? Uh, I never trained online with you guys, but the place I go, it's it's called Quakes Baseball in Lake, in Lake Forest, and we do a lot of like your guys' stuff. He's driveline certified, so he has the foundations of pitching oh, nice. um, PowerPoint, and he'll show us that. Like he showed us that he shows it to us every year, just to like reinforce like what we're doing. And right before the quarantine started last year, I bought a shoulder tube and a set of wrist weights and plyo balls. So and then That's I built cool. a plyo ball in my backyard and. I did that basically during the whole quarantine. Let's go. That's uh, yeah, that's so super awesome. fire. And also, like, not not that surprising after taking a glance at, at your biomechanics report uh, earlier today and seeing that you're 17. And uh, the, the biomechanics report is really fire. I'll say that uh, off the bat. So, All right. thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'll um, I'll, I can start off just by uh, kind of screen sharing, going into. Uh, like track where, where stuff is located a bit. Have you seen uh, track at all? Yeah, I, um, I, that's, let me think. We use track um, for our workouts. Like our coach programmed our workouts for us while we were on the quarantine, like anything we could do at home. Okay, nice. So that's how I started using it. And then um, like recently I saw that you guys added the edge, the driveline edge, like accessibility. So I've been using that a lot, just like, to see different movements, different pitches, stuff like that. Dude, dude, really quickly, David's been uh, using the pitch Vizzy tool a bunch, and and on uh on like Thursday or Friday, because because David, we, one of the recent projects, like I've been kind of getting started with one of my coworkers, Melanie Bell, is like getting a business analytics dashboard, like for internal use, like driving like company KPIs, revenue, pr pretty boring stuff, but pretty important stuff. But I was like, we we're doing like edge tool like submissions, so you like submit a date range. And then you see like who's been using what tool or what tool has been using being, being used a bunch. And I saw Pitch Vizzy had like 
30 uses like the day I was looking at, it, I was like, whoa. I was like, is that a is that a bug? And I clicked on uh the a pitch visits and then it split out between individuals and you were like, you had like eight uses, and I was like, Oh, this this is the guy I just hooked up. Like, <laughs> let me ask him if it's a bug or not. I was like, yo, you've been using this a bunch. He's like, Yeah, play around with him. I'm like, all right, chill, it's not a bug. <laughs> That's fire. Oh, That's yeah. fire. Premium premium med user too. Uh, all right, I'll I'll go ahead and uh, share screen real quick. So let me know if um, you can't see see any of this. You, get, you good? Cool. Going. Yeah, yeah, I can see. Sweet. So yeah, uh, you said you you were able to see like your biomechanics report here. Um, yeah. Inside the media tab. Uh huh. Yeah. So this is a uh, this is track kind of like where uh, everything's gonna be. Um, your biomechanics report is right here. This is the PDF. We'll pull it up in, in Visual 3D as as well, but in terms of in terms of getting to this point, as far as the uh, assessment process goes, that you did it uh, Arizona, did you just like describe what kind of you went through uh, with us when we were in Phoenix? Okay, so I got there, um, talked to Spencer. He told me to start getting warm. So I started off foam rolling, doing the lacrosse ball stuff on the wall. And when that was over, he had me get into the warm-up routine. So J-band, shoulder tube, and wrist weights. Nice. I went through nice. all that, started throwing on the plyo wall. After I did all the plyo ball throws, then I moved into weighted ball long toss and then just whatever else I needed to stay warm. Nice. Yeah. And then, uh, so Lindley and I, we basically went down, uh, we have like a whole entire mobile app that we can set up, uh, on tripods and, and whatnot. We just propped it up around the mound. Um, as soon as David was ready to throw, we marked him up with the, uh, the reflective markers that we use. Um, and then really we only needed a couple pitches. I think you threw like three or five fastballs, uh, in the motion capture lab and, Following like a bunch of processing and analysis, we get to this PDF, which, um, as I'm sure you've probably seen, is not the most like easier or intuitive thing to immediately understand. But like the real value in the biomechanics report is being able to show it in, in Visual 3D. So just to like show you immediately, I mean, these are your your pitching mechanics uh, in 3D. So anything in terms of like questions uh uh you know ideas or stuff that you have in mind like feel free to bring up throughout this meeting but we're kind of just going to like walk through the report and and talk about uh some stuff as we go so uh kind of to start on on the report side of things um the way that the report is broken down it it starts with arm action then we get into uh some kind of like the torso and lower half elements and the deeper lower half and then kinematic sequencing and rotational uh, velocities here. But arm action is kind of like the first initial point because a lot of uh, early drills too in the, the programming focus on like cleaning up any type of like arm action inefficiencies, right? Like if you think about the pivot pick, a lot of that is, is geared towards, uh, you know, some constraint based throwing, to help uh, clean, clean up the arm action. So as far as uh, your report goes, anything that uh, sticks out or was like majorly flagged is going to be referenced in your notes as well inside your athlete profile to show where that is. Um, if you go into, let me just move this around. If you go to your, your athlete profile, you go to assessments uh, and then over here, biomechanics report notes there will be notes uh, in here for your biomechanics report kind of like written out in terms of like what are some uh, important things that we, that we referenced or saw within this report. And then also drill scores, which is going to be a key piece of what Spencer talks uh, to you about in terms of like programming decisions um, around those. So as far as the arm action goes, uh, it was pretty good. Uh, not that many inefficiencies. The one notes in here were elbow being a bit low at ball release and slight arm drag at ball release. So looking at the PDF, a couple of things that you do like really well right off the bat was creating plenty of elbow flexion into foot plant. So you had like a good, nice constrained arm action. 
Uh, plenty of shoulder horizontal abduction. That's like the scap retraction, scap loading. That was really good. Um, but by no means was like external rotation move late or was there not enough like max external rotation. Kind of like the the one thing that was, was mentioned there was the arm not really coming out of uh, shoulder horizontal abduction that much. And I think a lot of that is going to be related to the way that your trunk was moving. So torso rotation and torso lateral tilt. So, so specifically to see that like actually in the throw, if we go to uh, about where, where foot plant is when you're throwing, this is like a, this is a really fire position as is. So you've got um, more than enough elbow flexion that we'd like to see. You're creating scap retraction if we look from above. So if we create like a line out of your shoulder, we're looking to see that humerus like retract back into that like loaded position, right? Um, so that's good there. Uh, other things would be like if the arm wasn't getting up into external rotation on time, but you get, you get plenty of that there. Um, the one thing I will say, and I think this is going to be mentioned uh, later on in the report as well as torso is like a pretty, pretty good amount of like lateral trunk tilt and torso rotation. And I actually want to say this is like fairly common, uh, in younger throwers. I don't know if, uh, Lindley, you've seen that as well, but I feel like high school and like early college guys, um, that maybe aren't as, as developed, uh, as older guys, they'll tend to like compensate somewhat uh with with torso moves um in terms of like where they are at foot plant as opposed to being like more upright more stacked i don't know if if uh you've seen that as well in lee or have anything no no i don't i don't have much on that most of the uh times i've looked into torso rotations not not uh in respect to the playing level or or like age yeah yeah I've seen it in like a, a lot of lighter guys as well. Um, but does that make sense, David? Yeah. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of just like a, uh, I guess like some people refer to it as like leaking early or kind of like dumping off, right? Like you're pulling mm -hmm. off laterally, uh, in this instance to kind of like generate, you know, uh, throwing velocity, um, which, which could be like a strength thing. You might not be able to like, uh, rotate as, as, strongly or efficiently from like a more stacked position right now. But regardless, when it comes to like torso uh, positions, I wouldn't be too worried about it unless it had like a, a significant impact on your arm action. So like, let's say that your arm wasn't getting into external rotation, you weren't creating ex, ex, uh, elbow flexion and you weren't like scap loading then I'd be, I'd be worried about like, what is the, what is the torso doing? But if you're able to like have, uh, an efficient arm action with this kind of like torso lateral chunk tilt, um, and kind of like already being more forward at foot plant, that's fine. Like, I don't think I'd really, uh, change that. And honestly, you, you could run into an instance where like a coach or, or an instructor or something will coach you out of that position just because it does look like uh, an aggressive move, right? Like you're up right here. And then again, like the common coachism, I guess, is like dumping off. I mean, this, like uh, <laughs> we'll get, get more into this later, but a ball release, this is a pretty tight position. Like this is like not, not that common to see this much lateral trunk tilt. Um, but again, as, as long as it's not having like a significant, you know, negative impact on your arm action, I wouldn't be be too worried uh, about that kind of move. Have you always kind of thrown like this? Um, not really. I think what it kind of comes from is when when I'm when I start trying to throw like like max intent, like I get my front knee starts to like leak out. Mm -hmm. And I get kind of a bad block in it and my torso follows. So when I take video of myself, like doing walking windups or something where I'm not like, I'm trying to throw hard, but not like as hard as I was trying to throw in the, in the mocap, then mm -hmm. my lead leg block and my torso stay upright and it, everything works. But when I get on the mound, it starts to like leak out like this. Interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I could see it being like a little bit of a like compensation uh, or something, like leaking off early just to like create more velocity there. Yeah. Are you t- are you talking about doing a uh, plow drills flat ground, or are you, when you referenced your, doing uh, walking wind ups at a little bit lower intensity, is that off the mound as well? It's off a mound. Oh, okay. And it's 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 a hundred percent, but it's not like the same. It doesn't feel the same as when I'm on a mound. Gotcha. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, the the I mean the front end flexion is an interesting one to bring up too regarding your report. So uh just to note as well, like inside the PDF, this uh these graphs right here, the ones that are overlaid, this gray region is kind of like our elite data set, a normative range for that. So you'd look you would be looking for um these metrics to fall within those or potentially be above in some cases. So like typically in these, if we see someone far outside these ranges, uh, it, it would be bad. But as I said, you, you create plenty of elbow flexion, create plenty of shoulder horizontal abduction, external rotation. You do like largely exactly what uh, all the elite throwers do. So this is all really good. The biggest like glaring one that is different is shoulder horizontal abduction and release, right? This is that note that was saying there might be a bit of like arm drag going on. Um, If you think about this move right here, shoulder horizontal abduction, so that's like my humerus in this plane, you get it back really far, but it never really comes like quite back up to being in line with your shoulders. Now, I I don't know if that's uh, 100% like, related to what's going on with the arm. And I think it's actually more related to how much torso rotation you get uh, throughout the throw. Like when you get into release, your tor- torso is is still rotating at this point. So it looks like it's your, uh, your humerus is like still behind in terms of shoulder horizontal abduction, like specifically saying that it's like still back here. But I wouldn't be surprised if that's more so uh, just related to how much you rotate with your torso after release. Like, granted, you'd still want this shoulder horizontal abduction to get closer to zero um, throughout the throw, but it, it could be related to this like pretty pretty excessive, you know, uh, trunk tilt and like trunk rotation, right? Because you get. You get pretty deep over there uh, into into release. But besides that, I mean, everything looks really good as far as arm action goes relative to the big throwers. And even so, what I was going to bring up, because you mentioned your um, lead leg, like your, your front knee kinematics, like blocking velocities, this is really good. Like you don't, you don't necessarily uh, track or sink too quickly into the throw. Um, when you land at foot plant, your front knee basically sticks. Uh, I mean, oftentimes like with, especially with younger throwers that are less developed, that lead leg will hit and that front knee is going to like track forward as opposed to kind of like clawing back and, and seeing that, um, increase in knee extension, angular velocity. I think that somewhere in the notes, uh, it mentioned that, the extension angular velocity like the peak was a was a little low but still i think this is this is pretty good um you were mentioning the like so you think that your front knee sometimes in high intent like you don't quite block enough in, in those drills yeah so i like when i take i have a video of me throwing like a couple weeks ago and it's from the front and it just looks like i land my knee caves out i throw and then it like goes back in and then i like finish the throw interesting yeah yeah i wonder if like there's a it seems like maybe it's opening a little late in terms of like when you come down like if the foot comes down here the knee still has to like rotate into a position where you can block better from uh, as opposed to like landing in a position where you can like block immediately. Like if we land right here, there's still like a decent amount that that knee has to get to before it can like efficiently start to, you know, extend. 
uh, from that position. But I want to say, yeah, your pelvis angle foot plant, it, it was fine. Like um, normally in people that don't block that well, they just can't get their hips open and they're trying to like block from a position where their pelvis is still closed. But at foot plant, I mean, you're still getting your hips open and, and creating a good amount of hip shoulder separation. So like those things are looking pretty good to me. And I mean, at 17 years old, like what is your peak velo right now? 89. 89. I mean, you were yeah. in the mocap. I want to say you were 87, 88, right? Yeah. 87.6. Yeah. So first of all, like being able to throw in mocap that close to your peak velocity <laughs> is like sick and not a lot of people can do that. Uh, typically like we see like five to almost like, you know, I'd say like 5% decrease. What, what do you guys think the average is like about, about 5%? I think, I think it should be changed. a lot more. I think it should be a lot yeah. more. I think it's gotten better at yeah. least, uh, in, in gym we've gone, we put like way more pressure or not way more pressure, way more like emphasis on like that being used to track velo KPIs in gym. Yeah. I mean, yeah. 5% and potentially but, but more, still, yeah. but I mean, yeah. you're within like, uh, yeah, a mile. I mean, you know, a mile an hour of your peak in mocap, yeah. like that is, that is super fire. Um, and especially like 17, I mean, that's, these are, these are pretty good mechanics and uh pretty good, uh, result in, result in velocity. Um, as far as, yeah, rotational velocities go, I mean, everything is just like good. This is just like a very good biomechanics report, like well within range uh, in terms of like how fast all these segments should be rotating. I mean, max internal rotation velocity is like super high, uh, above like data set norms. Like this is, this is really good. Um, and yeah, trunk angular velocity. So like, as far as looking through the report in terms of like, is there anything out of whack that we could look elsewhere position wise? nothing sticks out that bad anything that could potentially be a an inefficiency of okay um you know when we were talking about the lead knee if you weren't creating enough of a lead leg block we'd look at pelvis angle um to see if you were maybe opening up too early or still being closed at foot plant but that's not the case so you're you're good there uh creating a good block from an open pelvis position, which is what we want to see. Hip shoulder separation at foot plant, you're creating a bunch, which is super fire. Maintaining that throughout, I guess this is something kind of along the lines of the shoulder horizontal abduction. Like when you're looking at the shoulder horizontal abduction, you create a ton of that scap load and then it never really quite gets out of it into release, right? Like the arm is like still kind of dragging behind uh, through release, same thing kind of occurs with hip shoulder separation, right? Like creating a bunch early on and into foot plant, which is what you'd want to see. And then if you look at the elite throwers and that normative range, see how it decreases throughout the throw into ball release and it keeps going down yours kind of, it does decrease a bit. So you create hip shoulder separation, start to unwind that hip shoulder separation, but you don't quite get all the way out of it, right? So it, it almost looks like whether it's your pelvis angle is is still opening up or your torso angle doesn't quite ever catch up uh, to your pelvis angle. But I mean, you're finishing the throw uh, at ball release and you've still got 15 degrees of hip shoulder separation. So arguably, if you could close up that hip shoulder separation at the end of the throw, uh, I mean, there, there's potential there uh, as far as like, uh, you know, if we want to get really nitpicky in terms of inefficiencies, um, in the throw. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, other than that, it's, there isn't really too much in terms of like stuff that sticks out. Uh, again, it's just a pretty, pretty good report. Um, is there anything specific that you were like curious about, like any like particular, uh, like parts of your delivery that you were, you were hoping to kind of get some feedback on from the lab? Mostly 
my lead leg block just because like it doesn't feel like I get enough of that. Like I kind of like my knee is still pretty bent as I throw the ball. And also I, like, what do you think I could do to try and feel that like my shoulder closing off or like to try and get to less hip shoulder separation at the very end of the throw? Yeah, I think the the block uh, could the block is an interesting piece there. So one one thing with uh, with this is um, like potentially the blocking earlier, uh, having this like increase in lead knee extension angular velocity. Like yes, blocking immediately into the throw. I think that with most throwers that can always happen uh, earlier and B to benefit. So even though you do land, uh, this area right here where you're just negative, this is technically you like tracking forward and sinking into more knee flexion. You don't go positive into extension angular velocity until right here in the throw. So this is the point where you start to actually, actually block. So arguably anything before that, you are losing like efficient blocking uh, it, it, in that area. So wanting to see this line more positive early in the throw, uh, would, would be good, uh, or, or be helpful there. And then as far as the, uh, torso rotation and like the arm catching up, I, I wouldn't be too worried about the shoulder horizontal abduction just because everything else is, uh, at a at a good spot in terms of like where it's at torso rotation wise so i wouldn't really like change too much um i guess the argument could be that you're maybe like over rotating too much with the torso but like looking at the arm and, and where it is as it like travels through space like your uh internal rotation velocities are really fire and everything sequences really well as is so I almost wouldn't want to like mess with this too much. You know, your, okay. your, your peak pelvis, uh, rotation timing is like right around foot plant. Maybe this could happen a little later in the throw. And the same thing goes for torso rotation. Maybe this could also happen a little later in the throw, but everything lines up in sequence really well. Uh, timing between peaks is, is really good. Um, so yeah, I mean, maybe, that, that's really all I can think of at, uh, at first glance is maybe like delayed trunk angle and delayed pelvis angle at some point. Um, Lindley, what do you think? I don't know. You, you mentioned, you asked about the uh, closing off hip shoulder separation. I think if you can go to the next page uh, with pelvis and yeah. So you see your pelvis is still like still opening up at basically uh, ball release. Um, so I think it's possible that it's either like getting to that fully open position earlier or not necessarily getting to that fully open position, but just like stabilizing earlier. So you're not continuing to rotate with your pelvis. So maybe that's just some like, um, hip or hip or core strength or something to kind of like provide, because with the, with the block, we talk a lot about how we're providing a solid and firm foundation for the rest of the body to, to rotate on and flex on. So if we, like, if, if you were to, um, land with your front leg block and just provide a good, strong foundation and a good stable, stable pelvis, then maybe, uh, that hip shoulder separation would close off a little bit more completely by ball release. And maybe you do gain a little bit of uh, torso rotation or torso stability with uh, a more stable pelvis. Okay. Yeah, you can, and you can really see it here too, like exactly what Lindley's talking about. Right at this point in the throw, if you look at this green line, this is where your pelvis angle starts to like deviate from what the elite group does, right? It keeps going up while the elite group kind of like stays around that like uh, 85, 90 range. And then the same thing happens with hip shoulder separation, right? So you're still within that like gray area, but right about here is where it shifts direction and starts to like flatten out and you just hold there. So this pelvis angle that you're at right here in the throw would kind of be that like peak pelvis mm -hmm. angle. And instead this just kind of keeps rotating out. 
And that's going to make it hard for your hip shoulder separation to like decrease. So right now you're just like maintaining hip shoulder separation stretch as opposed to if the pelvis angle just stuck uh, right there, similar to like how your lead leg block did, um, you, you could probably like close that, close off that, uh, that gap between like where you are and where that like elite range is uh, in that area. Okay. Dude, don't sleep on uh, David's velo being just outside of the current v uh, elite range we have, <laughs> right? It's 88 plus, uh, yeah. David threw 87.7. Yeah. Yeah. Round up, he's in, the, he's in the elite group. That's right. Yeah, that's fire. You got any other any other questions or uh, or thoughts on this? No, that that was pretty much everything. Nice. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, again, is pretty pretty easy uh, report to go over when everything like <laughs> looks really good. Like, there's not a lot of uh, inefficiencies <laughs> to talk about. So. Um, I would, I think that one thing that I, I do usually mention with like throwers like you, uh, especially like being younger and already moving super well is the lack of feedback, uh, from the report in terms of inefficiencies and whatnot is still really important. So like most throwers your age, when we do a biomechanics report and we talk about it, it's like creating a laundry list of like, okay, we need to work on this, 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 this these drills are going to help address all of these problems, that kind of a thing. The value uh, in your report is, you know, should be confidence in your mechanics. When, in terms of like, if there's ever a coach or an instructor out there that you encounter or something and he's like, oh, David, you dump way too early. Like you have way too much lateral tilt at foot plant. You're too open. You don't block enough. I mean, this, this report should give you the confidence of like, no, I mean, that's like actually not the case. Like I'm able to have a really good arm action from that position. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. And, and I think that that's like one thing with the, the reporting uh, that we do and kind of like that process that we try to avoid a lot is in the past, we've looked at, you know, if, if we looked at your torso angle at foot plant in the past, we would have said, oh, you're clearly way too much lateral trunk tilt and you're way too far in front. But as long as it's not compromising anything else that you do in the throw, specifically with your arm action, it, it doesn't really matter. Like you can achieve uh, efficient positions elsewhere by doing what you're doing with your torso right now. And that's totally fine. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, change that. And having this as like a reference point for, I'm already doing a good job. This is good. Uh, I think it's like pretty valuable for, for a thrower like you. And that's also, that's also to say that there are potent, there are other uh, possible effects of, of your delivery right here. Like you might be able to achieve a different shape on some of your pitches or, or a different uh, spin direction. If you're, if you keep this as opposed to um, something that would be considered more, more traditional, we've been looking yeah, into a lot. I noticed that, um, when I, I was like, when I, let me think. So like a couple months ago, probably in October, I was like one o'clock to like one twenty axis on my fastball. And when I, I guess I started trying to throw harder, I sort of started getting this like trunk tilt and my fastball moved to like a 36 axis. And I got a ton more vertical break. Like I went from like 17 18 to 21 22 which is yeah. pretty good so yeah i mean i could i could definitely see that with this uh with this arm angle at release this is like super super over the top yeah that makes sense. What, what's your what's your arsenal really quickly david uh fastball slider change up what, what, what's your slider and change kind of play like uh my slider is pretty good it's like negative probably like it's it's more of like a slurve it's like i throw it pretty hard though so it's like double negative five horizontal and vertical okay like fastball is like, like six seven horizontal and like 19 to like 22 vertical and my change up is around it's like a two two fifteen axis and like oh wow like let me think 
Um, here I'm gonna look for my ref sort of report. That's pretty far. That, that, the axe is yeah. down to two fifteen on a. That's on pretty. That's pretty over the top for a changeup too. Yeah. Yeah. From having such a like over the top fastball. Let me see. Reps. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I could see a lot of uh, a lot of pitching coaches seeing this position and being like, "This is bad." But my changeup is about. Let me see. Um, let me see where it says the axis. Okay, it's a. It's about. 15 vertical and 14 horizontal, but earlier in the summer I was throwing it a lot better and it was like 18 horizontal and like 10 vertical. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's like down below too. Yeah. Fire. Cool. You got any, got any other questions? No, that's, yeah, that's kind of everything. Cool. Uh, I mean, so Spencer will be reaching out to you about your uh, athlete meeting and stuff. He'll talk more about programming or anything. Um, okay. But all of these, all these notes and everything are, are in your profile, and uh, they'll be in there as well. I guess the other thing, I'll uh, I'll pull up real quick just to show you, um, in case you need any other like uh, questions or wanted to see something in the report. I don't know if Spencer mentioned this to you as well, but there's a resources tab and there's like a biomechanics mm -hmm. appendix that goes along with the uh, biomechanics report. So you can pull this up and kind of like work through this if you have any uh, questions or, or wanted to go back and, and read through this stuff. So it's kind of like a resources doc for the biomech report. Okay. Thank cool. you. Yeah. And, and David, how, how long are you in Arizona for? Oh, I'm in, I'm already back in California. Oh, you are? Okay. okay. Yeah. I just, uh, we flew out or yeah, we flew out for the night and flew back like two hours after the report or after the uh, crap. What, what oh, part of Cali? Cali? Uh, Southern California, Orange County. I live in Brea, so. Brea? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've spent my, uh, my brother used to live in Arcadia. Oh, okay. So I've, spent, I've spent quite a bit of time yeah. in those areas. Nice. Dope. Thanks nice. for uh, thanks for letting yeah, us thanks. do this, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for our content. content. Yeah. No problem. We'll talk to you uh, talk to you later. Let, and uh, if you have any questions or anything like with the report, like feel free to reach out. Of course. Or if you need more money, bro. <laughs> <laughs>